get it because I'm a... Anyway, I know how it is. Now that you get a real paycheck, it's nice to have stuff. You'll start saving money next year. Well, I hate to tell you, but good saving habits start now. Put just 20 bucks in the bank a month. Make your own coffee at home instead of that latte every morning. Brown bag it to work instead of ordering in. Those changes alone could save you thousands of dollars a year. Come on, I'm your piggy bank. We can be together again, me and you, the special times. <laughs> anyway, if you don't want me to cry anymore, feed me. Go to feedthepig.org for more ideas on how to save. Feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Some statistics are surprising. Some are unbelievable. Sweet potato pie. Mm, mm, mm. Even the keenest taste buds will tell you the best food on the planet. Large enough to serve you and small enough to know you. So get the Henry's at 5431 Indian Head Highway, Oxen Hill, Maryland, or give us a call at 301 749 6856. Welcome to the Armstrong Williams Show brought to you by Golden Crust Bakery, the fastest growing Caribbean owned franchise in the United States. Golden Crust is committed to the delivery of quality food and excellent customer service. Visit them today at goldencrustbakery.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Armstrong Real Show. Thank you so much for joining us. So Alex decided to join us for the 4 p.m. broadcast, which is unusual. Alex, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks, Armstrong. How are you doing? How do you define doing well? How do I define doing well? Not having too much bad news in one day. You, you normally have bad news in one day? No, but sometimes the struggles of the day can usually bring down the, the overall mood. And so today, I've been fortunate enough to not have a whole lot of bad news to soil the mood of the day. Uh, and Maxi, Maxi, how are you? I'm doing well, Armstrong. Unfortunately, I'm calling you from an airport, so I feel like I'm, I'm in a good space, but I just can't quite hear you all as well as I normally do, so forgive me if I make a mistake. You sure could fool us. You're hearing quite well. We hear you. Okay, quite well. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just no, I can't hear you that well. What is the what are the airports like? Given the height and security with the threat of terrorism, it's running really around? unbelievable. I today I'm traveling from two of probably the most safest places on the planet, Aspen to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and so you can imagine they're small, you know. And I'm going through Denver, but security in Aspen was bizarre. You had to you had to look the person in the eye directly so they could see your eye, eye to eye. They they had to pat everybody down. They had to get rid of all of the, um, you know, liquids. It was I mean they always do that, but it was just weird. They were so intense today. Um, Michael Cutler, welcome to the show. You're listening to Maxi Maxi. She's between Denver and Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and she said security at airports is just bizarre and highly unusual in two of the safest places on the planet. What do you have to add to this heightened terrorism? Is it real? Should we be concerned? Well, I think we need to be concerned. You know, as I wrote in a recent commentary, nobody has sounded the all clear. I just put an article out. Usually I write for CAPS, Californians for Population Stabilization, but I did this out just on my own, uh, on my website, michaelcutler.net. Uh, and, you know, the point that I'm making is that with all the talk about comprehensive reform, everyone's forgetting why we have borders and immigration laws in the first place, to keep out the terrorists, the criminals, uh, people who pose a threat to us. And if you look at the 9-11 Commission, 
they gave us all of these findings and recommendations. They interviewed thousands of people. I was one of the folks they interviewed. And yet you would never know there was a 9-11 commission if you look at comprehensive reform that they're, they're charging at without giving any thought to the way that it may well endanger national security. Um, Max, do you in any kind of way feel threatened or uncomfortable given this heightened security? And what are the reactions from other passengers in the airport? Are they calm? Are they cooperating? No, yeah, okay, I'll tell you quickly, um, in Aspen, again, it's such a small area, but I will say the passengers were irritated. They seemed to be, you know, they felt put upon, like they didn't want to answer the question, they didn't want to do, because they made you look them in the eye, et cetera, et cetera, so it was a little whatever, but the thing is, is when, you know, I've been reading and watching the news, and you look at all these posts, these diplomatic posts that have been shut down, you look at all these embassies that are going to be shut down, you're looking at all this stuff, and it does, you know, make you think, wow, how does this relate directly to what we're doing here, traveling state to state? Um, how should passengers respond to security during these heightened times, Michael? What's the best advice can you share? I don't think anybody wants to get a window seat on a de facto cruise missile. You know, I do a lot of traveling. And <laughs> it is a nuisance sometimes. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what the alternative is, but you know what really disturbs me, Armstrong? This fixation on airplanes, it's only one of many ways that we are threatened. Uh, and, and, you know, on 9-11, the passengers on those um, ill-fated planes had no idea they were about to die. I mean, usually when hijackers took over airplanes, you went for a ride. You may have wound up in a country you didn't want to go to, but I don't think anybody expected that they would use the airplanes as a weapon. Since 9-11, when you read about all these reports, the underwear bomber and so forth, the passengers tend to spring up and say, no, this is not happening while I'm on this airplane. But there are so many ways that we are vulnerable, but where we're dealing with international terrorists, it starts with our inability or unwillingness to keep the bad guys out of our country in the first place, don't you think? Maxi, Maxi. I agree with I Michael. Agree. I, I remember being on a show with him uh, months back, and I agree with everything he's saying. I may not be politically aligned with him, but I definitely agree with what he is saying, and, and I think that is huge, that we never look at all these other ways that people could attack this country. But they haven't used those other ways. They only use certain ways that we're quite familiar with, Michael. Well, no, no, no. Wait a minute, Armstrong. I hate disagreeing with you, but I have to disagree. Um, you know, you had the, the attempt to blow up the subways. You had the, uh, the Times Square bomber. There's been a bunch of ways. There was a talk at one point about some Somalian terrorists who wanted to attack a mall. You know, the United States is kind of like turning a kid loose at Toys R Us with a, with a platinum card. There are so many areas of vulnerability. Uh, and as an agent, you know, I'm always looking at situations, trying to imagine what the bad guy sees when he looks at the United States. And stop and think about all the ways that we are vulnerable. Stop and think about the ways that we have been forced to give up almost all of our expectations of privacy that we thought the Fourth Amendment guaranteed. And we're doing this because of national security. But the most common sense measures in the world are being ignored because of profit and greed. Uh, you know, this idea about tourism has driven the increase in the number of visa waiver countries. Well, why in the world, at a dangerous time like this, are we making it easier for foreign nationals to enter the United States with a reduced level of scrutiny, while Americans are being subjected to a greater level of scrutiny? And, and you know, Maxie, I, 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 I appreciate that you agree with me, uh, but, you know, this isn't political. I don't care where we are on the political spectrum. This isn't about Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. This is about being American. Really? Because, see, I feel that, you know, we've got to figure out a way that we don't take away our rights. You know, um, I don't have all the facts, but I remember when we were talking about how, um, you know, in 2008, I think Obama quickly passed through some legislation that took what George Bush put in, you know, all the surveillance, et cetera, et cetera, and all these rules and regulations. He made it 50 times more intense. And I remember talking about that, and, and I wish you would address that. See, that's part that scares me is they're able to, to use this, the fear, which is so small, but yet so close to take away our rights as citizens, as private Americans. I don't get well, it. I, 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 I understand your concern. Look, it was, uh, it was 
um, Ben Franklin, who said that if you're willing to exchange freedom for uh, security, you'll have neither. So we exactly. really do have to we have to walk a delicate balance. But why in the world are we allowing corporations and their executives who know nothing about national security to dictate national security policies uh, simply because they're the ones making the campaign contributions? You know. Uh, Campaign contributions, in my world, to my thinking, are legalized bribes. You know. Yes, I I, I understand what you're saying, and I think that's a very valid topic. But I also feel that when it comes to, I'm just a personal citizen walking around. I can't. And I feel like I'm guilty until proven innocent when I'm passing through security. Why is it that I can't be innocent until proven guilty? I mean, isn't there another way to do it? It's got to be. Well, you know, I, I understand that the pressure that everybody is under to keep us safe, but I have to tell you, I, I look at some of the stuff that goes on and it leaves me scratching my head. You know my background. I'm a, I'm a retired senior special agent with the INS. I've worked on terrorism as well as narcotics investigations. And again, I just want to quickly put out two websites, capsweb.org, michaelcutler.net. If your listeners are, are interested, go to those websites, check out what I've been writing about. Because I'm certainly not soft on doing what's necessary, but you go to New York and we have these Hercules teams. And look, I had the privilege of working with the NYPD and I think they're fabulous. It was a privilege to work with them. Um, they're among the best in the world. But why in the world do we have heavily armored police showing up at random on street corners claiming that this is a way to keep the terrorists off balance? I mean, the likelihood that some terrorist is going to be standing on that street corner when 30 or 40 cops in full battle gear and submachine guns jump out of their cars I have to tell you, it makes me a little bit apprehensive, and I'm very comfortable around firearms, but submachine guns on a congested street corner in midtown Manhattan, um, it almost looks like uh, they're making a movie or perhaps getting ready for Halloween. I, I think there's a place for tactical police units. We certainly work closely with the SWAT teams. In New York, they're called emergency services. You're going in after hard targets, people who have nothing to lose. You want to have an overwhelming force so that people aren't going to resist and engage in a shootout. It makes sense. But this random display of police power on a street corner uh, reminded me more of what I encountered in Mexico City 30 or 35 years ago than what we're normally accustomed to here inside the United States. I, I really want our politicians to stop doing dog and pony shows and start looking at strategies that make sense and that are consistent with our long-term principles of freedom and privacy in the United States. Hold that point, Michael that Cutler. right to you? Max and Max. Oh, yes. That's we'll be back, Armstrong Williams. Don't go away. Armstrong Williams returns in a moment. Say bye-bye burgers, pass on the pizza, forget the frangs. Anytime is party time. Discover Golden Cross's authentic Jamaican-style patties. Beef, chicken, vegetables, soya, spinach, and shrimp. Feast on our great taste sensations. Jerk chicken, ox scale, sliced fish, and much more. Savor the taste of the Caribbean. Only at a Golden Cross near you. A family tradition since 1949. GoldenCrossBakery.com for more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams. What does it mean to be conservative? Freedom of speech, freedom of free enterprise, freedom of assembly, less government, less taxes. As a matter of fact, a flat tax. Everyone should pay proportional tax. It doesn't matter whether you make a hundred million or ten thousand. Everyone should pay their ten percent. Everyone should have something at stake in this American economy. I'm Armstrong Williams expressing what we mean by conservative traditional value. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? 
Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowlama.com. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org. Paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams with an opportunity to own a piece of paradise in Nassau, Bahamas. Spectacular land prices. 8,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet lot. Affordable prices. Hilltop properties with views of the magnificent sea. Just call 242-677-3120 or 3121 or go to info at rightsidewire.com and leave your information. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. And welcome back to the broadcast. Uh, Michael, why don't you go in detail and explain to Max and I and Alex and the audience, what is it that has caused this heightened security alert and why the president is shutting down these embassies and your thoughts about it. Uh, and just, I mean, I, I haven't seen anything like this in quite some time. So this, this is completely unprecedented. Um, and, and, you know, my, my initial reaction is to think, okay, maybe there's a political motivation. But then if you'll notice, uh, Congressman Peter King, who chairs one of the Homeland Security subcommittees, he used to chair the Homeland Security Committee in the House, and he's a conservative Republican. He and a number of other reser- uh, conservative Republicans uh, have gone public and said, no, we were thoroughly briefed and the actions are justified. Uh, One of the points they made is that the chatter, that is to say the conversations going back and forth between the players or among the players in al-Qaeda that they've identified, and and I have mixed feelings about going public to say this because obviously they are burning methods of data collection by saying this publicly because you know that uh, the terrorists are listening to the broadcast just the way you and I are. Uh, Just to digress real quickly, I remember shortly no, after No, 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 don't, 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 don't digress. Okay, I won't digress. Question. Sorry, please, I'll, I'll get to please, that later. Thank you. But, but, but the point, <laughs> no, but there's a reason I was going to digress. No, no, not because just, we've the audience wants to know. we've got to be careful what we divulge, because we've seen it in the past when we've let al-Qaeda and their operatives know what we're doing, they change their tactics. Now, maybe they're doing this in the hopes that they will change their tactic. But there was a time when some generals said, you know, they need to look at the rocks behind bin Laden. They'll know where he is. The next time bin Laden put out a a, a video, there was burlap covering the wall behind him. That was the digression I was going to make. So part of me is concerned about what we're releasing to the the public, to the world. On the other hand, I I, I have to imagine that the, the level of the threat is so serious, so great, that the State Department felt they had no alternative. One of the reports that I heard this morning was that they are actually surgically implanting high explosives into suicide bombers. Wow. Wow. So this is the kind of stuff that we're dealing with. This Mm. is madness. The the lunacy that we are dealing with with this enemy, and you had an administration that didn't want to admit that Benghazi was a terrorist attack, um, this was the re- a spontaneous reaction to a film. I, I mean, it's astonishing. And, and so perhaps the administration said, you know, we got it wrong the last time. Of course, I, I guess back then it went against the narrative that, you know, bin Laden's dead, GM is working. Of course, Detroit is dead also at this point, it would seem. But, but I, I, I have to believe that there is some very serious intelligence, specific intelligence that was developed that, re- that they felt necessitated these uh, unprecedented measures. Wow. And so what do we do? We just change our lifestyles. We have no longer have normalcy, that they can threaten us and put the fear of death in us and just change everything about our movement and our life here in America and abroad? 
Well, I think we have to be smart about what we're doing. You know, the Israelis have been living under the gun ever since the, the state of Israel was formed back in 1948. And you have to be kind of stoic. I mean, look what went on in wartime England with the uh, the buzz bombs and then the V2s raining down on them, uh, taking out buildings and killing people. We live in an ugly, dangerous world. And, and, and that's why this dichotomy, where on the one hand, uh, we're, we're one step short sometimes, I don't think we're in a police state, but you almost have the feeling of being in a police state because of the concerns. But then on the other hand, we have open borders. And those two concepts don't mesh well together. If you're that concerned about people coming to America to kill us, then you tighten up. When people suffer burglaries, you know, you can drive by a bad neighbor, just to think of an analogy I'd never thought of before, and you know, I love using analogies, when you go into neighborhoods that are high crime, even if you're from out of town, it becomes readily apparent you're in a high crime neighborhood. Because what do you normally see on the houses in bad neighborhoods? Bars. People actually weld, you know, uh, fencing bars on the windows to keep burglars out. You know, common sense says you do things to keep the people out who want to do harm to you. So here on the one hand, we're doing all these things that, you know, are supposed to keep us safe. But then we have the story just on the 30th of July, just last week, DHS, the, I called the Department of Homeland Surrender in my frustration and anger, uh, claimed to have lost track of a million, a million foreign visitors. A couple of months earlier, there was this unbelievable story about how um, the Witness Protection Program, I got so angry I called it Witless Protection, um, gave new identities to a cooperating terrorist who said, all right, will cooperate with you. Well, they had to protect them. That makes sense. I worked with uh, WITSEC uh, quite a bit when I was an agent. So they give them new identities, but then they don't divulge the new identities to the people that comp compile the no-fly lists. You know, you can't be stupid about it, and our government is terminally stupid, it would seem. Maxie? Uh, what are your thoughts, Maxie? Well, yeah, my only thought that I wanted to get back to your original comment before the break was you said about the SWAT teams. It was so bizarre. I was in Martha's Vineyard, again, a very small private place, and the just re a week ago before I headed out to Athens, and the weirdest thing that happened was they were every person there that I was visiting and staying with was complaining of a private SWAT team that they had instilled there. And it yes, it could be since Obama was visiting or whatever. Remember how he started visiting there because he likes there or whatever? Well, the point is, people were saying, oh, my gosh, in, since Obama's been elected, he started vacationing here, we now can't even go into town, have a drink, walk around or whatever. They used to have one cop in town on the corner, and now they've got these police and SWAT teams that are outnumbering the citizens. It's so outrageous. And they're not just there when Obama's visiting. They're there all the time now. Scary. I mean, I'm just pointing it out. It's just weird how, you know, everywhere you go, you do start to feel you're being watched or somehow these people have information or whatever. And I don't, I mean, I, unlike you, don't have the information you have. I just have information that I read or see or witness. Michael, is there better reading material, better things to listen to and be on the lookout for? Well, you know, I hate to say it this way, but yeah, go to michaelcutler.net and capsweb.org. But we, we really have got to read between the lines. You know, think of how many people bought cigarettes and wound up getting lung cancer because they liked a particular slogan. You know, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Our government today has been reduced to slogans. And people mindlessly follow what they're being told like a bunch of sheep all too often. You really have to take a step back and say, look, is what we're being told consistent with what common sense tells us makes sense? Does it pass the giggle test? You know, and all too often it doesn't. Again, if we're willing to frisk 85-year-old women and x-ray 5-year-old kids, I can't remember the last time I saw an 85-year-old woman who could overpower a flight crew or a 5-year-old kid who could overpower somebody. Uh, why are we doing that? Well, on the other side of it, total, being totally unwilling to secure borders, make the immigration laws work for national security. Uh, you know, right now, this administration is providing hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens. I want to make you think about this. 
with identity documents and employment authorization, so-called children, this DACA pro program, which stands for Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals. I was asked by a member of Congress. I was on the phone with a, with a powerful member of Congress, powerful because he holds a, a high-level position within Congress. I'm going to uh, spare putting his name out there because I, I need to be able to speak with these folks. But we had a lengthy conversation, and he said, what would you do with the kids? And I said, look, if some 15-year-old child walked into an immigration office with his or her transcript from the school in hand, I'd be willing to have that conversation. But when you're telling me that somebody who's 31 years old can apply today and claim that they've been here for the last 15 years, and by the way, we're not even doing the interviews in person, they just mail in the documents, then please don't tell me we have national security. And if you do an overlay, this Deferred Action Program for so-called children goes to age 31. If you look at the profile of the average terrorist, it's a person under the age of 31, so they match perfectly. So in theory, you could have terrorists fraudulently claiming that they are from a particular country that they're not, claiming that they entered the country 15 years ago when they got here 15 days ago, and we would really have no way of determining who they are because there's no resources to conduct any field investigations. We're not doing face-to-face -face interviews. We are undermining national security left, right, and center where foreign nationals are concerned, but Americans, on the other hand, are being treated more like suspects than anybody else in the world today. Um, you know, I, you know. when we come back, what security measures should we put in place? What are we missing in this debate? I mean, Great the United, question. The United States is a very sophisticated and intelligent country, and obviously they don't tell us all, but obviously the reason why we have not had the kind of attacks on our salt that others have had is due to do good intelligence. In fact, a person can try a thousand times, and we can get it right 999 times. All they want to do is get it right once. I want you to talk That's about right. the 99, 999 times we've gotten it right, why we've gotten it right, why do you think we'll continue to be the average, law of average by a huge amounts, and what we need to do to work with our authorities in law enforcement. Max and Max is joining us. Uh, Michael Cutler is joining us. Alex, who's good at listening, and that's a good trait. Somebody needs to listen while others talk, and when you listen, you can learn. Max, you have things calmed down in that airport? Um, yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little but, bit, but you know, it's know. still, it's still, no, you can feel it. It's definitely a heightened security. There's no doubt. Now, you, are you on your way to Jackson Hole on vacation? Yeah, I'm on my way. I'll say where I am. I'm, my sister has a home there and has her, we used to go to a ranch there a long time ago, and she has a, made her life there, has three kids, a couple businesses. So I visit her, you know, try to visit her once a year, but don't always make it. And I, so I'm heading out there just for about three or four days. Is she excited that you're coming? She is so excited because our great friend, you know, uh, from North Carolina, that's where we were earlier in our home there. Just hold it. <laughs> the hold one there. We'll know. go back. Hold um, it. So we were up there, yeah. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Life is full of unexpected changes. Everyone has potential to do wrong. And when they choose to do it, contact the Buxell Group for your private investigation needs. TheBuxellGroup.com or by phone at 202-243-9746. Whether there's an instance of a cheating spouse, child custody, process service, or security, don't continue suspecting. Get closure so that you can move on with your life. Visit TheBuxellGroup.com now or call 202-243-9746. If you think it's happening... It probably is. To travelers along the road of life who have fallen asleep at the wheel, to the many who woke up in time to avert disaster and get back on the righteous path. For the ones who crashed and survived and now adhere vigilantly to a virtuous and righteous path. Finally, Armstrong Williams' much-anticipated new book, Reawakening Virtues, gives his insights into these daily challenges and much more. Reawakening Virtues is available in bookstores and at Amazon.com. 
Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sports shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Most Americans simply have never been taught the basics of money management, let alone how to secure their financial future. But there is hope. Financial Education and Literacy Advisors, also known as FILA, does what others don't. FILA teaches financial education. If you'd like more information about providing a financial wellness program for your employees or a credit-bearing college course in personal finance or other valuable programs, please visit MyFeela.com. That's M-Y-F-E-L-A dot com or send an email to info at MyFeela.com. Elder Chicks is an exciting part of the fastest growing segment of the population. Women in their 70s, 80s, and older who are mastering the art of a senior life. We're no longer unseen and unheard. We're providing role models for each other and the baby boomers who are fast approaching retirement. Join our virtual community. Hit www.elderchicks.com on your computer keyboard. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. And welcome back to Armstrong Williams Show. Dr. Gary Bernard, are you on the line? Not How yet. Are you? Dr. Bernard? Yes. Okay, just hold there. Um, Michael, tell us um, what triggered this and what is it we've been doing so well that we need to continue to do. Well, obviously, we've thwarted a bunch of terrorist attacks. And, you know, I no longer have my top secret clearance. So most of the information I get, I get from public source or very limited conversations. I mean, people are very discreet about what they're willing to talk about, and they should be. I know when I was an agent, uh, there were many things that were off uh, limits in terms of speaking with anybody or off the job. But what we are seeing is where intelligence is helping to, uh, to thwart ongoing terrorist plots. So we've been good that way. There have been a bunch of them. Uh, but sometimes we just got lucky. Uh, Amub Talib, the so-called underwear bomber, um, between his ineptitude and the quick thinking of passengers on board the airplane, um, he was stopped. It was interesting, by the way, that um, Napolitano, the day afterwards, took credit for it and said, you know, the system worked. And then I wrote a commentary wherein I said that if hope is not a strategy, then dumb luck is not a success. In fact, I confronted Mike Chertoff uh, with that when uh, we both spoke at Chapman Law School. We spent uh, 45 minutes in a limo. I, I think it was a long 45 minutes for Mr. Chertoff. But on the other hand, we can't keep expecting our luck to hold. And as you rightfully said, they just got to get it right once. So if you look at what we're not doing right, going back again to providing identity documents, driver's licenses, immigration benefits, if you look at the 9-11 Commission report, and I really wish that the people out there would do that. It's free. You can get it online. You can go to my website, michaelcutler.net, capsweb.org. They've been posting my stuff. There's also the 9-11 Commission uh, staff report on terrorist travel. And they spoke about how immigration fraud was the best way for terrorists to not only enter the United States, but embed themselves in the United States. Uh, you know, we were attacked twice in 1993, and then in 97 they did my first congressional hearing for the Immigration Subcommittee on visa fraud and immigration benefit fraud, because we know that's how the terrorists who attacked us entered the country and were able to hide in plain sight. Uh, in fact, I've, I've got a paper coming out. Uh, I, I was published in the social contract, uh, I guess next week is when it's supposed to be published, about how political asylum fraud has been used by the terrorists. I'm very sensitive about political asylum. My family was decimated in the Holocaust. I've always been a strong proponent for political asylum. But it's got to be uh, w with integrity. The Tsarnaev brothers who attacked Boston at the marathon so viciously, it would appear may have committed fraud in their application for asylum. Because to get asylum, you have to voice and articulate a credible fear that if I go back to my home country, I will be persecuted or worse. As soon as they got lawful status, they went back to Chechnya. So it certainly calls it... Exactly. exactly. So doesn't this call into question how credible their fear was? Uh, you know, yes. if, if you look yes. at Ramzi Youssef, one of the 93 bombing suspects at the Trade Center, 
committed political asylum fraud. A month earlier, you have a guy by the name of Cansey who shoots up the CIA, kills two CIA officers, wounds three others, also applied for political asylum and lied through his teeth. So if we don't do more to ferret out the fraud and make certain that when we are giving benefits to people that they are really entitled to them, I'm, I'm all for being compassionate and protecting the vulnerable. You know, we're at our best when we do that. But that whole system absolutely must have integrity or the terrorists will see in our compassion and kindness, weakness and opportunity. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. How can they get more information about you? Uh, please go to my website, michaelcutler.net, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-C-U-T-L-E-R, michaelcutler.net. I also write for CAPS, Californians for Population Stabilization, uh, their terrific website, capsweb.org. By the way, look at their problem. They're now releasing hardened criminals because their jails are overflowing with criminal aliens. This is impacting America on so many levels, Armstrong, and I want to thank you for covering it because uh, this is part of the story you're not hearing on TV, are you? No, we're not, and thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. See you on Monday, by all the right. way. All right. Thank you. All the best. Dr. Gary Bernard, how well. are you today? I'm doing outstanding. Uh, how are you? We're, we're transitioning to uh, our topic about grandma's wisdom is what I'm going to call it, Mac. So you're going to get a hoot out of this. Dr. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Bernard, tell us about grandma's wisdom. Yeah, well, there's a, a fellow back in the 60s, a psychologist that was doing research with monkeys, racist monkeys, and his name's David Premack, and he came up with some studies that elucidated this principle. And, you know, it's really more colloquially known as grandma's rule. And the formal side of it is if you take an activity of low interest or low reward and you pair it, associate it with an activity of high interest, high reward, it invariably increases the likelihood greatly that you'll complete the unwanted task, the task that is of low interest. And so grandma's rule is a real practical way of, of uh, putting that into common sense. It's eat your spinach, then you get your ice cream. It's a, a natural principle that is so simple, and we use it all the time, uh, many times without even knowing it, but it is an elegant, simple principle that is at the heart of solving many problems at home with kids, but in our governments and our any any system team teamwork uh, yes are you talking to us yeah oh maxi maxi your response oh no i think it sounds and i think it sounds like an incredible uh you know proposition an incredible thing to look at and i'd love to know i mean are you looking armstrong to see how it applies well to you know what, what i guess what i understand it of, seems like he's saying that we should aim low and you can only go a little higher if you aim high. Uh, is, is, are you saying you should aim low first? I'm just trying to get the gist of this. No. Yeah. No. No, I'm not at all. That's, that, I, can, I guess I can see where you would get that. But no, there are many things that we have trouble individually and corporately doing because they just don't interest us. Okay? One of them would be, uh, for example, working, okay? The, the natural law is, and these rules and principles are contingent. When you work and do your job, you get paid, okay? Well, but I don't want to work, okay? So now what do we do? Do we try to force people to work and try to constantly put effort into convincing them that they need to work? Not really. There's another way. It's okay. You get to eat when you work, you get paid when you work. We don't let a contractor come by and say, I'll paint your house, give me the $10,000 now, and I'll paint it sometime next week. That, it's ludicrous, but we have public policies, family policies, systemic policies that distort this basic, simple rule. That's all I'm saying. I don't think we You're should. You're saying, I mean, are you saying the main, the main one is, i.e., allowing illegal immigrants to vote because, you know, people that are on welfare, people who, you know, don't work, people who want to not have to do anything except collect monies from the government, 
is this applying to that? I mean, are these people a part of what's going to be doing for the next presidential election? I mean, I, I, to me, it, that's what it strikes me as. Absolutely, yeah. It's a portable principle. We can take it into any place, anywhere we want, and it applies. So, yes, absolutely. It, it is when we distort it, what we're doing is we're indulging or entitling something to, to someone without any kind of contingency. Well, that's just not the way nature is. That's not the way we do business that, at all. Yet we'll tolerate people distorting that rule. It's almost like trying to play a game and someone, may, and we've done this with little kids, they make up their own rules. Well, how fun is that? It's crazy. It's very frustrating. So the basic rules are there for us. We Internal motivation comes from these external realities and pressure. If we get in the way and distort it, well, no wonder we have people wanting something without the contingency, without their personal responsibility. That starts in our homes. We need to teach our children that that's not cruel. We're not being mean. We're not discriminating unfairly. That is the way the world works. You know, we, we accept that if it's a natural law of physics. Okay, nobody's exempt. Nobody gets their feelings hurt if we talk about that. It's not cruel. God or nature isn't being cruel to us if we do stupid things and we fall and we hurt ourselves. Well, the same natural force is built into all kinds of activities, of relationship, of productivity, of health, balance. And yet this little simple thing we distort all the time. And many times wow. because there are pressures, there are pressures because if we don't hold people accountable, let's go back to the eat the spinach, then eat the ice, then you get the ice cream. If we think spinach is healthy, we're not wanting to fight with our kids. We just simply say, I know you like ice cream. You may have it, but you must eat the spinach first. Okay, let's honor their choice. If they don't eat the spinach, we don't indulge them and give them the ice cream. They then learn that they have the power to get us to do what they want, anytime they want, regardless of the rule. So now they're distorting the rules, and we're playing by this. Hold there. Set of we're rules. coming back. Dr. Gary Menard, Max and Max, Alex A.W., we'll be back. Armstrong Williams returns in a moment. Say bye-bye burgers, pass on the pizza, forget the frangs. Anytime is patty time. Discover Golden Cross's authentic Jamaican-style patties. Beef, chicken, vegetables, soya, spinach, and shrimp. Feast on our great taste sensations. Jet chicken, ox scale, sliced fish, and much more. Savor the taste of the Caribbean. Only at a Golden Cross near you. A family tradition since 1949. GoldenCrossBakery.com for more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundit's views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowllama.com. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. 
America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org. Paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sport shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet, you're listening to Armstrong Williams. Welcome back to the show. Dr. Gary Bernard, please remind our audience, I think Maxie Maxie had to leave us. I can tell she she left us because I don't hear that that sound from being on the mobile in the airport. Tell our audience a little more about yourself. A little bit more about myself. Is that what you For those said? Our member listeners who are joining us for the first time, they're hearing your yeah, voice. And I'm a uh, clinical child psychologist, been in practice about 30 years, live in San Antonio, Texas, work with all kinds of kids and families and adults as well, but primarily my practice is with that. I've written a book. It's called Becoming a Power Parent, Seven Guiding Principles for Creating a Healthy Family. I blog weekly, sometimes more. Uh, blog site is... Uh, World Wide Web, thepower-parent.com. Do we lose him? I don't know. He just he just dropped all of a sudden. Um, Is he there? uh, To to help families, so it's more a faith-based thing. And then later we'll come out with a more secular book, uh, workbook, which the book is. Uh, I'm about most of my life, kids and and working with kids, uh, of course, you know, these same principles that we're talking about are universal, and all life forms follow and have to live by these principles. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of getting fairly simple and using the most simple, um, portable models of life for success. And I think we have plenty of them. Uh, but we get pulled in so many directions uh, in these modern times because of all the distractions, and there are plenty of them, I know. Dr. Max, uh, Max, how important is psychology in raising children? What do I think of how important it is? I think it's important because it's important for the adult that's raising the child to understand the psyche. It's not important for the child. The child is being raised. The child is the one that has to have love, care, compassion, and rules and restrictions. It has to be, you know, yin and yang, a little bit of this. It's kind of what he's saying about, you know, give and take. I'll give you the ice cream if you uh, eat your spinach. It's it's very, very simple. It's across the board. And psychology is important for the adult to understand the child and how they can be a better parent. But other than that, I think sometimes it can get in the way. So, Doctor, let 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 me have this discussion here. What is it that you found that can guarantee the best results to produce good children who contribute to society instead of children who just um, end up being destructive? Is there a simpler formula that parents can do? Are there signs that you need to look for? Are there books? What is it that a parent, a society needs to look for early on in these kids' development? Yeah, well, what Maxie just said is so true. It starts off day one, the parent doing their job. This little infant that comes into our life is totally dependent upon us. Now, there is a natural uh, course to development from birth all the way to death. We understand these things very well. Most of them are pretty common sense, so most people do. Not that we pay much attention to them, but the very first step is it's our job to bond emotionally, physically, and every other way with that child. And what does that mean? That means we have to behave in certain predictable ways. 
these become patterns. Many times they're the same patterns that we modeled, that, that we watched from our parents. And so we have this transgenerational thing. In one way, it's very positive because that's how we learn and we hang on to the good stuff and pass on better stuff to our kids. In some ways, it's pretty destructive because when it doesn't work, it keeps getting passed on. So our first step is bond so that that kid naturally will attach to us. And it's through that attachment that they will receive all that they need in life, basically. And that comes developmentally, like climbing a ladder. There are stages. And so there, when, when children are very small, infants and toddlers, they need more of our availability. But they certainly need to become independent, autonomous little folks. Now, how would they do that? Well, they need a secure base. That's us. We need to be predictable. We need to caress them, feed them, meet all of their needs when they're infants, all of them. Then they start to trust in their environment. They start to have this concept of parents being loving, caring, trustworthy, always available, not giving in and indulging them, but playing by the right consistent rules so that they can make good predictions. When kids get that early on, Armstrong, it, it's a very rare thing that a child is going to go off the reservation. It, it happens. There are genetic and other developmental things, but it's rare. What they're going to do is they're going to feel safe and secure, so they're going to start exploring their environment and learning about these natural laws, about gravity. We don't teach them gravity. They learn that when they do something silly and they fall somewhere or roll off of a ledge as an infant. So we're there to help teach them how to do all things for themselves. That's what makes a self-sufficient, um, autonomous, sovereign human being that has every right that any other human being has. And we're the first teachers, the primary teachers. So when I see problems with that, yes, there are exceptions, but the rule is, we just haven't done our job. And more of the pressures these days are disintegrating the very fabric and system and parental influence that could give them what they need. So that's not an indictment necessarily or a condemnation on people. It's just observation. Now, what are we going to do about it? Well, I would say... Let's start breaking down, and I think this is where psychology comes in. There's been a lot of studies, you know, just like with physics and those laws. There have been a lot of studies on this, and we, we, we know this stuff, so we ought to pay attention to it. They're the building blocks of health, and we need to get back to that. That's what the book is about. There are other books out there. There's lots of information about it, but we're on information overload, so there's not much attention paid to it until a child does something awful, like murder someone. Then we pay attention to it, and oh, there's all this reactivity, and everybody's trying to figure it out. How could that happen? You know, I just, I don't yeah, well, think, I think there's much mystery there. Yeah, well, I think information and medication go hand in hand. I think we've had a medication overload and an information overload, and we need to I get agree back with to the basics. You know, just what you're saying, we get back to the basics, we need to start over and just take it one day at a time and use common sense and non-violent communication, but strict, non-violent. There's a way to train people, i.e. your children, without being negative or violent. There are ways to do that, and I'm sure you and your books, just from talking with you and listening to you and, and knowing <laughs> you, you agree with them. Continue. You know, I, I, I find this conversation. Dr. Bernard, are you there? Max and Max. You know, I, I find it very interesting because early nurturing. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. You know, Max and Max, go ahead. And take, early nurturing and structure and love and commitment and time and bonding is so critical to a child early on. Exactly. I think all those things, Armstronger, you know, what we were, were talking about. I mean, I know you know who. Walter Williams is, when he used to be on his show and say things about how just good old-fashioned, you know, raising your kids was what it was about, it really is. It's just 
we, we analyze everything. We have too much medication. We have too much information, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's why your guest, the good doctor, was saying, you know, getting back to He always talks about nature and nurture. And I think, I think it's good that you have him on and that he brings this to the forefront because it's important. Well, I, I thank you for that. But I'll tell you, I agree with you, Maxie, that there is no need and yet there is no evidence that being violent, angry, emotional, spanking, using physical force, does anything over the long haul to help kids be healthier and make better choices. There's no evidence, clearly. So I agree with you. There are plenty of ways to get children to behave that don't use that kind of force. But we're back to square one again. Either there's going to be some internal motivation to do it, or there has to be something external to make them do it. That's the conflict that we're in. So how do you motivate a child to eat spinach? It's really simple. Pair it with something they like. Now it's not a battle anymore. If they really like ice cream or whatever it is, the likelihood goes sky high that they're going to do what you need them to do to remain healthy. You don't have to yell. don't have to scream. don't have to slap them. None of that. In, in exactly, my point is, you agree, though, there are Dr. simple Bernard, systems you, for this. Yeah, I want to ask a question. Do you agree, Dr. Bernard, do you agree that, because this is so interesting to me, you know, I raised my kids Catholic because I felt that they needed that. They needed to have a higher power that was immediate and all around them, not with me explaining it and everything. And I feel that, you know, what you're talking about goes back to the old adage that, you know, we've got to have something outside of ourselves that's bigger than we are. I don't know what that is for each person. It's something different or each family. But we cannot, You and to me, it's community service. It's charity. It's caring. It's giving back. It's, you know, all kinds of things. It's what Armstrong does every day on the radio. It's what we do by calling in. But the point is, yeah. you know, it's good old-fashioned social work. But the, But the reality is, you know, how do we teach people, how do we get them back to that place, which was just, you know, a world that was smaller, simpler? I agree with you. You're exactly right. And I think we start, the how is pretty simple, and we can talk more about that, but how we do, where we do it is within the home. That's the laboratory. How do you get kids to get outside of themselves? Well, they learn that in the home. Yes, they're not Doctor, the only one. They're coexisting. Thank you, Max. It's safe travels. We'll look forward to having you back tomorrow. All right, I'll talk to you. Thank you, Alex. Good night, everybody. Good day. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website.